Okay, uh, in the previous chapter, we already discussed uh, three macroeconomic indicators. Uh, they are GDP as a measure of national income or output, and uh, CPI as a measure of the overall price level, and the unemployment rate as a measure of the job market. Uh, this chapter and the next two, so I'm talking about chapters three and four and five, uh, we are going to look at these uh, three aspects of our macroeconomy more in depth. So um, this chapter three here is about national income, okay, where it comes from and where it goes. All right. And um, this chapter, what we're going to deal with is uh, specifically a model called the Leo classical model. Okay. Now. Um, before we jump into our discussion about this model, we would like to give you a broader picture on the components of a typical economic model. Okay? Now, um, the first thing is the assumptions. Okay? As a social science, um, the, our economic study always involves a bunch of assumptions. Okay? These assumptions help us, you know, um, simplify our analysis so we can narrowly focus on what we really want to focus on. Okay. For example, in your uh, intro uh, class, when we talk about the supply and demand, okay, um, if we are interested in the, e the effect of a change in price, we would assume other factors are held constant, right? That's what we call uh, Sederos Paribus, right? The Latin phrase. And um, so that's the first uh, element or component in a model, okay? The second one is the economic intuition. In other words, the idea, the insight we want to get across in this model, okay? And um, this is the most important thing, okay? This, is, uh, this involves a lot of deep thinking Okay, and um, again, let's take the supply and demand as an example. So, um, if you um, believe that you know, like um, an increase in price would lead to a decrease in quantity demanded for a certain good or service, that is um, our economic intuition, right? And um, on the top of that, we would also talk about the mathematical derivation and graphical analysis. Now, um, math and graphs are just the tools okay, uh, for us to, you know, get our point across in a more accurate way, more rigorous way. Okay? And um, so the economic intuition is still the most important thing. All right. And again, use the supply and demand um, as an example. We always, you know, draw the supply and demand diagram, right? Or do the graphical analysis when we, you know, move along the curve or when we shift the curve. We believe those are the better way than the words, okay? Because the same words can be understood in a quite different ways. All right. And um, then we would reach our theoretical conclusion. Okay. Again, if you, as we just mentioned, um, a higher price leads to a lower quantity demanded, or vice versa, a lower uh, price leads to a higher quantity demanded. That's so-called the conclusion, right? But the conclusion is not going to be the end of our discussion. We will go further to look at the empirical evidence. Okay. Uh, in other words, we won't assume that the conclusions we reach or discussed on this course must be correct or 100% true. Now we're going to check out the real world data. Okay? This data may come from the government surveys or um, a large number of case studies or census, a, a lot of ways we can collect the information from the real world. Okay? And uh, we're going to check if you know the um, the evidence um, is supportive of our conclusion. Okay, occasionally you may find it's not. Okay, 
Um, in other words, the uh, conclusions are not well supported by the evidence. If that happens, we won't take that as the end of the world, okay? Like an extremely bad thing happening to us. We're actually taking that as an opportunity for us to go back and rethink about our model, uh, especially go back to the very beginning of this model building uh, process and check these uh, assumptions we made okay? and see what we missed or do we need to manipulate the assumption so that we can get um, a different conclusion which might be more uh, consistent with the real world data okay and uh now the road ahead not just about this chapter but in the next few chapters is um this one okay and um i would strongly encourage you to pause the video and uh, just you know to stare at this chart and, and see what's uh, amazing you find in this one okay basically this chart is uh, um, showing you the u.s gdp but it's indexed so we take the beginning year as 100 and shows the trajectory of the u.s uh, uh, economy okay in the past um you know more than 100 years okay and um the blue curve here is the uh, the index you know uh, calculated on the basis of the government reported GDP numbers okay and you also see the red da dash line that's the trend line okay again you can pause the video now and give yourself uh, several seconds to say you know what's amazing on this chart to you all right so um, Many of you probably already find that, you know, if you look at the blue curve, you would find there are a lot of ups and downs, which is, you know, what we expected, right? Because it's a normal, uh, it, it's a real world um, number. So every year we get, you know, um, a lot of things going on. They may affect the, the economy in different ways, okay? Um, but what's really amazing to me is this red dashed line, okay? Um, if you recall, you know, a lot of things happened to uh, the U.S. in the past uh, 130, 40 years. Okay? For example, World War One, World War Two, right? And we also had the Great uh, Depression uh, at the end of 1920s and early 1930s, right? And then we had the Cold War, we had the dot-com bubble, and... Um, 2007 2008 financial crisis right we experienced a lot however when we look at the trend the trend is pretty much stable in other words though we although we have ups and downs but the economy never uh, deviate from its long-term trend in a persistent way okay so if it, it goes you know above the trend then it will come back if it falls below the trend, it will pick up. It will pick up, right? So that's why we're super curious about what determines the trend. Okay, that's exactly what the Leo classical model in this chapter will demonstrate to us. Okay, and so in this chapter and next two, we're going to focus on the long-term trend. Okay, we believe that once we understand the long term, it will be easier for us to understand the short term fluctuations, okay, which we will talk later this semester and when we look at the Keynesian economics. All right. Now, uh, the next thing I would like to um, ask you to pause the video and do is to draw a circular flow diagram. You should heard about this from your intro level class already, right? And um, Again, some of you probably already put that behind, but that's fine. Okay, just pull out a, pe a blank piece of paper and use the pencils to to draw. You know, try your best. Okay, to get as many components of that diagram as possible. Okay, so on the next video, we're going to talk about that, and that will help us. Um, you know, understand what will be discussed in this chapter. Okay because we're going to take a journey, you know, walk around or travel around in that circular flow diagram, okay? 
by the way um, from the intro class you should already heard that you know the circular flow diagram is just a simplified version of our economic system okay you could also say that's a oversimplified that's fine okay but that's the way again we can have the general understanding of how our economic system works okay now please go ahead and do that and on the next video we're going to talk about it Thank you.